I'll do a little intro on Zed. I'm sure you all have stalked his social media. So Zed was born in war-torn Afghanistan, OK? Uh, he, him and his family fled on foot to Pakistan. They ended up residing in Melbourne and all his life he's been told that he'll never amount to anything. He was discouraged by his family, his peers, and he remembers at the age of 13, he saw a guy in a Lamborghini. And the people around him said, that's what success looks like. And I know everyone looks at all the fancy cars and everything, but to Zed, it's actually more meaningful. So by the age of 25 years old, he bought his first Lamborghini. He was already considered a millionaire. And he took what everyone thought about him and used it as his fuel. Okay, this is probably one of the most inspirational, self-driven, inspired human being I've ever come across. And the funny thing is that I've actually worked all over the world and I've met some of the most influential people. But one thing I realized is that they're all in their 70s and they're millionaires. Here's Zed, just barely turned 30 and he's got the mindset of an absolute legend. He doesn't allow anything to get in his way. So what's getting in your way? So at the end of the day, if you can take one thing from Zed and use it, it will improve your business. He believed in me before I believed in myself. And I remember last year, November, I made in one month over a million dollars commission. And that was through him. When I first started real estate, I've been in real estate for about 11 years now. I just wish I had Zed that I could look up to when I first started, because back in the days, marketing was very conservative, it still is to a lot of people out there. There was no such thing as social media. We used to get told, make sure Zed, you gotta shave, clean shave, mate. There's no facial hair. You gotta make sure your car's clean. You gotta make sure you take your car to the car wash. The real estate has changed so much. I get 99.9% .9 of my deals through social media. And that's what I'm gonna share with you guys today. I really wanted to sell million dollar homes when I first started. Because my average house price was only $400,000 to $600,000. I always wanted to sell luxury homes. And I remember when I first sold my $700,000 property, I'm like, oh my God, this is a dream come true. I make $15,000 out of this deal. I've been struggling for the last four months and I, all of a sudden I just get $15,000. $15,000 is like, give me 1.5 million in cash today. I got told that if you're a salesman or a saleswoman, you should look at everybody as an opportunity. And everyone's got a blank chick in their forehead, it's up to you whether you want to ask the question or not. And the person that actually asks the question is the person that gets the answer. So then I learned, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should start doing this. I walked past this bakery in Hampton Park and I said, sir, you look amazing and I like the way you're holding the bread because I was that fucking nervous, I don't know what to say. I'm like, I'm so nervous, do you, want, do you have a house for me to sell, please? <laughs> and he said, yeah, yes, yes, I'm actually thinking about selling. Boom! There he goes, when luck creates or meets the opportunity. Because a lot of people in South believe in luck and a lot of people wait for hope to make deals happen. But then I got thought, maybe you should ask the question more frequently. Maybe you should connect with minimum 20 different people on a daily basis. So it's not about who you know, it's about who knows you in the business and what you are doing today. The prospects that you're talking to today is the outcome you're gonna get tomorrow. So in sales, it's all a numbers game. Some will, some won't, so what next? But it's so important to have an objective, to have a purpose, and then the outcome's important. Yeah? Specific, measurable, is it achievable? Is it realistic? Time management. You've got a deadline. You will do whatever you can in order to meet that deadline. If you're gonna tell me you're gonna sell 14 properties this year, this is the formula you gotta got apply. This has helped me out so much. Have you heard about the 6P rule? P1, plan. Plan your day in advance, plan your week in advance. Plan your month in advance. Plan the next appointment you've got. If you're gonna make 15 phone calls or 16 phone calls as an appointment, plan it a day in advance so when you do come in, what do we like as salespeople? Structure an ideal shoot. You just come in, next 45 minutes, you're in the office by 8.30 and then it's already 9.45, you haven't even made one phone call because we've just been chatting about what happened last week on the weekend. So if you have a plan, if you have a routine, that will avoid all the stuff. You wake up every single day, you're performing. You can choose to be a good performer, or a really bad performer, that's up to you. Because every single day we're born performers, you can choose to be a good performer because you've planned your day in advance, you've practiced your pitch, and you've prepared yourself because you stalked the client. And whilst you're there, the minute you knock on his house or his office, you perform. And that's why they say, once you're a good performer, you produce the results. And I can guarantee you right now, I make one sale a day. 
And if I haven't made one sale a day, I don't fucking go home because it's my attitude. I'm not greedy. I don't want to live at my maximum capacity I can. You see a tree grows as tall as it can. Why can't humans do it? I wish for you guys to lose against me at a listing presentation because that's going to teach you something. And I hope for you to lose because you're going to grow. If I can sell a $10 million house through Instagram through a 37-year-old from WA, I'm sure you'll be able to sell a site through LinkedIn. Use social media to leverage off. You'll be one step ahead of every single person out there. I would love to be able to help you out, help you grow, because nothing in the world makes me happy to see every single person grow out there. That's what I'm all about. I'm all about sharing my knowledge. I'm all about giving back to the world because the more you give, the more you receive. That's what I believe, that's how I've been doing It's not about what I want, it's about how I can help others as well whilst I'm there. I am my biggest competition. If I was to beat me, then I'm doing better than more than a lot of people out there. It's me versus me. I wish everybody all the best. They're not my competition. Nobody's my competition, I am my competition.